Welcome again to Expat American. I am the Expat American here with Mrs. Expat American. Behind us looks like a giant Russian palace. Where has my Russian wife brought me? Is it summertime? Could it be in Russia? Incredible. Real natural. Sveta says these flowers are real, not plastic. How's that? <laughs> Are we pretty? Yes. Are you pretty? Are you ready? Interesting. We have woken ourselves up. It's probably lunchtime. We're getting ready. My wife is going to be my tour guide today in St. Petersburg. Our humble home for the next couple days comes with a little kitchen here, place to hang your clothes, bathroom. I like the view out the window. All these old European style buildings that are way older than I am, and my wife too. I think I can look like sort of a businessman in case I bump into the right person today or the wrong person. Sveta, what is your raw reaction to this place? It's a beautiful place. It's not my first time here, but every time I come here, I'm amazed. Every building is a piece of art. It's so beautiful. It's so different. You can look around. It's, it's really, really cool. And I can promise you that we will definitely not be doing everything that we should do on this trip because we're only here for three days. One day we gave to the conference. This is day two and tomorrow we leave. And this is my fourth time in this city. So I have seen the big places already. I will see them again for this channel, but right now it's just gonna be Sveta and I, no kids, seeing whatever we can that we haven't yet seen and we'll try and show you some of it. But no fret, we will definitely come here again. It's only four hours away by speedy train. Wait, what's that? Aha. Running to the train station, story of my life. Look at this cool statue of these guys, I guess, hanging out of a train car. I gotta run. So I just bought her ticket from an automatic terminal for the train and we're in a hurry. Oh, yes, there's toilets on this train.
Svetlana, where do you think we are? I don't think I know. We are in Tsarskoye Selo, in a little town Pushkin. And Tsarskoye Selo, I think that's uh, one of the places where the Tsar's family used to live. Have you ever been here before? No, that will be my first time. So you're excited? I am excited. Yeah, She's we'll been see. wanting to go here, guys, yeah, for I've years. Been, I've never been there. Here we are, we bought our ticket and walked in, and this behind us is the largest structure on the property. I think Zars used to live here. But Svita we'll, is not so sure. We'll figure it out when we are inside. With well, our that's right, that's right. And we're learning with you guys as we run around and see what we can see. Look at this little building here. I wonder how old it is. Okay, here we go. Look at this behind me. See that? How does a person get trees to grow so straight? And look over here. There's another one. Those ingenious Russians. What do you think of this place, darling? I love it so far. It's so beautiful. And we haven't been in the main sojourn yet, so we're about to go there. We have our fast pass this, uh, and we're ready to go. Fast pass. It's just a ticket. <laughs> and uh, we're going to this, uh, what is it called, mansion? Uh-huh, yes, but definitely. Yes, it is a mansion. Yeah. In British yes, and yes, in yes, fancy yeah. American. We're waiting in line here and to go in and see what the inside looks like. Look at the statues of all the men holding up the wall. And they're not really, it's decoration. And this is our ticket to get in. Look at the old-fashioned clock on the wall. You can see the hinges. Look at this beautiful palace. They're telling me in Russian everything I need to know. This building has used to have, let's say, 55 wonderful, beautiful, uh, big halls. Um, and there were a couple of different, uh, you know, there were different SARS and different years were living here. That was a summer residency. So they were living here from May to September. Sometimes Elizabeth, she actually liked this place, uh, most of all, most of them. She sometimes stayed till the very late autumn, which is quite cold for some people. In 1941, so this city was occupied. Um, it was circled around, so they were in this circle, and uh, some of these buildings, they were bombed and they were destroyed. And only um, 30 something, 31 or 32 of them were restored. Some of them, only a few of them stayed untouched because the bomb um, didn't destroy the whole entire building. So it was just some damages. Uh, but there are 22 uh, more holes which are still being reconstructed. Inside you can um, find two different styles. It's Baroque style and um, Elizabeth, she was inviting different, uh, she, she invited uh, Italian architectures to build these holes inside. Uh, and then later on she, um, it was in the fashion, the classicism, so and she invited a Scottish architect. I, unfortunately, I don't remember his name. Um, and they were working on, um, you know, the interior inside.
uh, Catherine the second so she had uh, Paul her son and she didn't have good relationships with him she didn't want him um, to become the next emperor and she instead took her grandson Alexander and she raised him so she was spending a lot of time with Alexander she was teaching him a lot of different um, you know things like music art math and a lot of other things and this Alexander he actually won Napoleon um, in, you know when it was Napoleon times um, it was interesting so how she took over and just got her grandson because she felt like he could be someone one day this place is just one of the residences of the Tsar's family they had uh, you know you know Tsaritsana that's where they started building it and there are other places around Russia where they were like residency for the family. There are halls where the emperors, the Tsars, they were inviting important people, their guests, where they can, um, they, they could give them like um, luxury dinners and they would uh, relax and uh, talk to each other, had some negotiations if there were like some people from the foreign countries. They stayed also in this course. You know, the Tsars, they were always um, wanted to follow the fashion. And when I saw one of the tables in this halls, the fashion was back then in the eight, 18th century, that um, the table for the guests has, had to be decorated with real flowers. And these real, real flowers cost a lot of money back then. And they um, they hired like special architects, special designers, special you know florists to call them nowadays, and they would make uh, all these decorations on the table. And they also ordered special people to make vases that will all look beautiful. It's like a luxury you know luxury dinner they were given to special guests and to the family. It's just interesting how they, you know, followed all this fashion um, back then. The Amber Hall, which was uh, actually stolen in the uh, 40s, and um, Russians still can't find this specific hall of Amber. So, but they restored it, they were using the Amber from Kaliningrad, and they completely rebuilt this hall, it looks so beautiful, it's like shiny. Well, in the Amber Room, um, uh, they had two paintings and the story of this painting is, so the Amber Room, when they stole everything from this room, they also stole this painting and then later on, uh, this painting was actually found in Germany in a small town, Bremen and uh, when they were having some negotiations how they can return the painting so by the time by the time they returned the painting to this museum um, some russian uh, painters they had already restored the painting and then when they originally recreated, it, recreated it yes and then when the original painting came to the museum now it's both paintings are there and you can compare how precise the um, you know, the artificial painting was to the original. They Incredible. were exactly the same. So guys, we just visited this wonderful, amazing cathedral. And I will tell you, uh, it looks inside as beautiful as outside, but with a lot of luxury. I was stunned. I even told my husband, I feel like a little girl who wants to cry because I can't imagine that you know, I somehow my family and you know my parents and grandparents and great grandparents and my other relatives they were a part of this wonderful you know um, houses and culture and um, country and I'm just now I'm just staring at this I'm looking at this and I'm amazed um, how it's beautiful and um, I have no words even to describe. I have no idea what they're talking about, but this place is beautiful. Check it out. Mm -hmm. 
these are pictures of what the rooms behind the doors used to look like before they were damaged in the 40s. English and Russian on the wall. This is what it looked like in the 40s. And this is before and after. That's a summer cafe, and I know this because everything is also in English here. And Sveta heard that this summer cafe is going to be for red batch people like us from the conference. Um, but I'm hungry, I can't wait. I think I'm going to go somewhere else. Darling, what are these strange plants? So, these plants are called Lopuhi, Lopuh. Also, we call with this name the person who is not, uh, how to say, who is like innocent and a little bit goofy and, you know, it's easy to um, cheat on this person, like you are Lopuh. They look like lily pads, sort of. But they're way bigger. Right, and off out of the water. We have left the estate and we are now just walking through the, is it a town or a city, darling? Oh, this is definitely a town. Through the town that the estate is in, just kind of seeing what it looks like. People playing basketball? Does this look like a town in your part of the world? Right now, we love that Russia has seasons. Um, it, it's almost like we lived in a snowy cold place for six months because we did and now we're living in a wonderful warm summer place it's like you live in one location but you get to feel like you're living in two different worlds throughout the year i love florida um because it's warm all the time but in summer it's almost too hot and there really is barely a winter so these bushes, they're called Shiponik in Russian. In English, I think it's rose hip or something. So Russians, uh, you know, Russians like drinking teas. We have all kinds of tea. And this is one kind of tea Russians usually drink with Shiponik. With the leaves of these bushes or the flower? Uh, the fruit. So like the, uh, now it's, it's already the flower, but before that it was a little... A little fruit kind of like a fruit. Check it out. People are swimming in the lake in summertime. Do Russians do normal things like you do? Looks like it to me. Svetlana, привет! My wife is stuck on the other side of the street because I jaywalked to see the swimming hole. But the name of this town we're in is Pushkin city or Pushkin town, Pushkin Gorod in Russian. Um, I assume it's named after the famous Russian named Pushkin. Um, but what do you think of this park? Isn't it beautiful? It's like so nice. Everyone's just kind of hanging out. And today is not a weekend day. It's during the week. Fialki. Fialki. It's a type of flower. It's the name, yeah, the type. Like a rose. We're at the little commuter train, local train station for this town. And it also looks like you're stepping back in time, all the old metal and whatnot. There's the tracks down there. Like an old school bus, we are on the train headed back, and this time we're on an older train. We paid for an um, uh, average ticket price, and this is a, a, a lower level, a cheaper one. We don't want to wait for the next train, so we just decided to jump on this one. And take, take a look, it's like, I don't know how old it is, but it's definitely old fashioned. What do you think of all this? Click like, subscribe, ring the bell notification, leave a comment and let us know how it was. 
and click the box to see what happens next. Can I zoom in? No, I cannot. Gosh, gosh, you're not as tall as me. I'm glad I'm not as tall as me. I'm happy actually. I'll be proud of you for me. Yeah? Yeah.